What's up, everyone? My name is Frank. Hope you're having a great day today. In today's video, I have another head to head challenge for you all. I'll be putting the Elite Series 2 core up against the Victrix Gambit to determine which controller is worth the buy. Today's video is made possible by Megamods. A huge shout out to them for supplying the controllers in today's video. Megamods create top tier Elite custom modded and esports ready controllers. If you're interested in purchasing one of their products, make sure to click on my affiliate link found down below in the description to save a couple bucks on your next purchase. If you're ready for this video, smash that like button and let's get started. This video will be focused on reviewing the Elite Series 2 core controller and seeing how it stacks up against the Victrix Gambit. For those who want an in-depth review on the Victrix Gambit, click on the pop-up or link in the description. Both controllers are targeting those who are looking to step up their game to a mid-range budget pro controller. The Xbox Elite Series 2 and core controllers are exactly the same with the core missing the accessories such as the carrying case, charging dock, four paddles, additional thumbsticks, and D-pad. You are, however, able to purchase these accessories afterwards by buying the complete component pack. For those who already own an Elite Series 2 are in luck because they can reuse their accessories on the core controller. This is great in the event a controller gets damaged. The core has three color choices, white, blue, and red. For those who like to stand out, the Design Lab allows you to fully customize the controller's color and truly make it your own. The Elite Series 2 core was released on September 21, 2022 and is priced at 130 USD or 140 Canadian. The complete component pack is priced at 60 USD or 75 Canadian. The Victrix Gambit comes in at 99 USD or 137 Canadian. The core is compatible with Xbox One, Series XS, Windows PC, and mobile. The Gambit, on the other hand, is compatible with Xbox One, Series XS, and Windows 10 and above only. The main competitors are the Elite Series 2, Scuf Inkstain Pro, and the Razer Wolverine V2. The core's box is a matte finish showing the color of the controller and the traditional product information can be found throughout the box. The underside of the lid has a rectangular cardboard piece to keep the controller held down. The controller sits in a molded plastic base, which keeps the controller well in place while in transport. Removing the base will reveal the controller colored 9 foot long braided USB type C cable and the instruction manual along with the thumbstick tension adjustment tool. The Gambit has a similar box style, but when the lid is removed, the controller is placed securely in the protective carrying case. Opening up the case will reveal the controller and its accessories, starting with a 10 foot long graded USB type C cable, alternate controller skin, the alternate paddle, gates, thumbsticks, and D-pad sit comfortably in a rubber base. Both controllers have a similar box design and layout. The core comes with the basic accessories, and although it has some great premium design elements, which I'll get to shortly, it's lacking as a first unboxing impression when compared to the Gambit, as it has a decent amount of accessories to play with. The Gambit wins the first unboxing impression. The core has a traditional Xbox style layout and holding the controller for the first time is a pleasant experience. The metallic finish components are noticed right away, giving the controller a high quality look and feel. The added wraparound rubberized grip adds to the high quality look and greatly improves comfort. All the buttons feel great and natural to use. The trigger stop buttons give a satisfying click when changing positions. The controller is also sturdy and robust when gripping tight. The Gambit shares the traditional Xbox style layout but feels slightly larger when holding. The controller's white faceplate does provide a neuroplastic grip section but doesn't extend to the rear. The controller's multi-clutch trigger stops are easy to use and provides plenty of customization. All buttons are easy to use but when gripping the controller tightly, I feel the controller creaking giving it that plastic feel. Both controllers have a similar layout, with the Gambit being slightly taller and wider, but they can both accommodate players with the average hand size. The Gambit has the ability to easily change faceplates due to it being held on by magnets. The purple faceplate does give good grip, but falls short from feeling premium with its flimsy design. The white faceplate does have a hand grip section 
but it doesn't extend to the back of the controller. The Gambit is lacking in premium touches and finishes, giving it a plasticky third-party knockoff feel. On the other hand, the Core looks the part with its metallic finish components, amazing soft wraparound rubberized grip, and sturdy controller design. The Core looks and feels like a pro controller. It's the winner of this round. The Core weighs in at around 345 grams. The controller's weight adds to its sturdy feel and feels great initially, but the heavy weight will increase hand fatigue in the long gaming sessions. The Gambit only weighs in at 243 grams, making it extremely lightweight and feeling cheap. However, the lightweight in the long gaming sessions will feel more comfortable to use as it won't fatigue your hands and wrists as easily. The Gambit is the winner of this round. The Core can be used both wirelessly and wired. It's compatible with Xbox One, Series SX, Windows PC, and other devices through Bluetooth. The wide range of supported devices make the controller very versatile. The 9 foot long braided USB Type-C cable is of good quality and easy to use. Simply align the USB-C end with the controller's USB port and plug in. The cable will click into place. Although there is some side to side movement, the cable is well secured. The Victrix Gambit is a wired device only and you use the provided 10 foot long braided USB Type-C cable. The cable is heavy duty with great build quality and two ferrite beads to prevent electrical feedback. In order to install the cable, align the USB Type-C end with the controller's USB port and press in firmly. The USB cable will click into place. The cable doesn't wiggle side to side and is well in place. You don't have to worry about the cable getting disconnected while gaming. The core has both wireless and wired capabilities, whereas the Gambit is only wired. The Gambit does have a better controller USB port. The sunken in port is a great design. The Gambit also has a slightly better USB cable. But this round goes to the core because it's more versatile in being able to connect wirelessly and to a larger amount of devices. The core doesn't have any added improvements to the D-pad and face buttons. They have the same standard feel as their traditional Xbox controllers. They are still both responsive and feel good to use. The core comes with a circular metal D-pad and it's very easy to swap. Pull up from the side to remove, the D-pad is held on by magnets. Realign the D-pad and the magnets will pull it into place. The Gambit has no improvements to the D-pad and face button functions. The Gambit does however come with two plastic D-pads, the traditional D-pad and the circular. In order to change the D-pad, use your nail to remove the one that's installed. Align the D-pad that you want to install and press down firmly, it will click into place. Having the ability to change D-pads is great to improve player comfort and response time as some game types heavily rely on D-pad inputs. Both controllers have great designs for swapping the D-pads, the core is magnetic, and the Gambit is press fit. With both controllers being side by side, there isn't any noticeable difference when using the D-pad and face buttons. Both controllers give the same feedback and resistance. For these reasons, this category is a tie. The bumpers on the core have a large smooth surface area. They are responsive, easy to press, and are comfortable. The triggers are the conventional Xbox style with haptic feedback and have a textured grip on the inner side which will slightly improve grip and feel. The triggers also have trigger locks with three positions. You can easily change trigger lock positions by sliding the knob to the appropriate position. Setting the trigger lock to its shortest position will help in any situation where the trigger needs to be pressed as quickly as possible. The Gambit also has a large style bumper, but has a textured grip throughout. The bumpers are responsive, but still feel as a standard Xbox controller. The Gambit's triggers also share the textured grip and have a large surface area. The triggers have the Victrix patented clutch triggers with five trigger stop positions. To adjust the trigger stop position, press and hold the purple clutch button, then press the trigger to the desired position, and then release the clutch to save that position. Both bumpers are very similar in feel and performance. Both triggers have trigger stops and when set to their shortest distance provide the same result, which isn't really that short at all. 
the course triggers do have the haptic feedback, but the Gambit does have a larger trigger surface area and nice textured grip throughout. For those reasons, the Gambit barely wins this category. For those who currently have an Xbox Elite Series 2 controller or who have purchased the complete component pack will be able to utilize the controller's back buttons. The smooth metal paddles enhance the high quality feel and they can easily be installed by aligning the paddle's end into the corresponding slot. The magnet will pull it in, clicking it into place. Each paddle is responsive and easy to activate. With my natural grip on the controller, my fingers are nicely placed on all four paddles and they are comfortable to use. The paddles are ergonomically placed to where your fingers naturally grip on the controller. The paddles are configured in the Xbox Accessories app. You are able to swap between two and four back paddles on the Gambit. Both styles have a texture grip throughout the paddle's large surface. They are easy to use and don't require much force. With my natural grip on the controller, my fingers are nicely placed on the paddles and they are comfortable to use. I noticed that the paddle is flexing before actually activating. This will slow down reaction time. To swap paddle designs, press the release button to disengage the paddle assembly. Grab the back paddle assembly that you want to install, slide the top in first, and then press down to click it into place. Having back paddles is a must on any pro controller to help improve response time, character movement, and gain the edge. The metal paddle design on the core adds to its premium quality. They are comfortable to use and very responsive. The magnetic design makes them easy to remove and install, but they are on the smaller side and don't provide any extra grip. Whereas with the Gambit, each paddle style has a large design, grip texture throughout, and ergonomic, which helps improve comfort. The paddles are easy to swap, however, the plastic design gives some unwanted flexing, which slows down response time. This round is a close one, but since the Gambit comes standard with the back paddles, it's the winner of this round. The course thumbsticks may look ordinary, but have a few hidden features, starting with a magnetic design, which allows you to swap thumbsticks easily by simply pulling up on it. If you don't have an Elite Series 2 controller, you'll need to purchase the complete component pack to have a variety of thumbstick choices. Removing the thumbstick will reveal its stick tension system, which allows you to adjust the stick tension by turning the mechanism with the provided key. There are three positions to choose from, which is great for maximizing performance on a wide variety of games and weapons. The Gambit comes with two alternate thumbstick choices, short dome and long concave. The controller also comes with two additional hexagonal gates, which are great for fighting games. To change thumbsticks, the faceplate must first be removed. Pull up on the thumbstick to remove it. Align the thumbstick you want to install and press down firmly. At this point, you can also change the gates on the white faceplate by pressing on the back side to remove the gate that's installed. Align the new gate and press down to click into place. Lastly, reinstall the faceplate. Having the ability to adjust thumbstick features is a great way to improve on aim and character control. The core's tension system is unique and an added benefit. The magnetic metal thumbstick design makes for quick switching, but if you don't already have an Elite Series 2 controller, you'll need to purchase the complete component pack to have alternate thumbsticks. The Gambit comes with two plastic alternate thumbsticks and gates, but the faceplate needs to be removed first to install them. Although the Gambit comes with more thumbstick accessories, the core's unique thumbstick tension design makes it a more desirable feature and allows it to win this round. The core has an impressive 40 hour battery life, which will come in handy in those long gaming sessions. The Gambit on the other hand, has a non-existent battery life as it's a wired controller only. Long battery life and wireless capabilities make the core the winner of this round. The core's Xbox accessories app is extremely powerful, allowing you to change button assignments, configure back paddles, fine-tune stick sensitivity curves, change stick dead zones, customize a wide variety of vibration settings, change the Xbox logo color, and update the firmware.
the Gamut's Control Hub app allows you to update firmware, calibrate the controller, and configure the controller settings such as button assignments, mapping the back paddles, adjusting stick dead zones, trigger dead zones, audio settings with EQ enhancers, and controller vibration intensity. Both apps are simple, easy to use, and allow you to adjust the most important features. While the Control Hub app allows you to adjust in depth the controller's audio sound profiles, the Xbox Accessories app allows you to go in depth with the core's thumbstick sensitivity curves, which is far more beneficial to improving gameplay. For this reason, the core is the winner of this round. There is no doubt that the core feels like the more premium controller with its high quality metal components, satin chrome accents, wrap around rubber grip, and unique thumbstick tension system. All buttons are responsive and the trigger locks are good, but the shortest distance needs to be improved on. The controller can be used both wirelessly and wired on multiple platforms and has an outstanding battery life. With the back paddles installed, they are great to use, ergonomically placed, and responsive, but could benefit from added grip. The Accessories app gives you great customization choices to maximize the controller's performance. The Gambit is indeed lacking in the high quality department, but makes up for it in the amount of included standard accessories. The Gambit has a carrying case, additional skin, alternate thumbsticks, gates, D-pad, and two styles of back paddles. The buttons are standard, but are still responsive, and the bumpers and triggers have a nice grip texture. There are a total of five positions for the trigger locks, but as with the core, the shortest distance isn't that short at all. Being able to switch from two to four paddles is great to accommodate a wide variety of players. The paddles are comfortable to use with great grip, but do have some unneeded flexing, which slows down reaction time. Tallying up the scores, the core is the winner of this head-to-head -head challenge. There is no doubt that it's a great controller, but because it's missing the paddles, which I think is one of the most important features to a pro controller, I'm gonna have to recommend purchasing the Gambit. Let's keep in mind that at this price point, we are in a mid-range budget pro controller category. And yes, you can purchase the complete component pack, but it will put us at the same price point as the Elite Series 2 and in another category. In this price range, the goal is to have a controller with pro features and accessories without breaking the bank. The Gambit is more affordable than the Core and comes standard with back paddles, alternate thumbsticks, D-pad, and gates. Being able to utilize paddles right away will help improve gameplay and give you that edge to step up your game to the next level. If you have any questions why I spoke about in today's video, I'll be leaving a link down below to join the Megmods forum. Hop on and ask your questions. Myself and Megmods will be there to assist you. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below in the video and hit me up on social media. It is always a pleasure helping you guys out and interact with my community. You guys are all amazing. Many more review videos to come, so stay tuned. If y'all enjoyed watching this video, make sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and share with your friends. Greatly appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, check me out for the very first time. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with my content, and don't forget to press the bell to become part of my notification squad. You guys are all amazing. A huge shout out to the sponsors, to new subscribers, to the Sparrow Troopers. You guys are all amazing. Thank you for the support. Everyone, have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this video, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.